Hello students, you all are only welcome to our YouTube channel Chemistry Teacher. Here in this video, it's we are going to talk about the atomic structure. It's the structure of the atom. Or we could find it out how this atom is structuralized there in this lesson. So students, it's the model model standing for the atom that what we are going to start talking here about if we are going to initiate this lesson this lesson means this topic this topic means it's the atomic structure we are going to start here if we are ready if we are ready to do that having all the subatomic particles we discovered hope you could remember in our earlier videos what we did was we talked about the discoveries made on the, those uh, subatomic particles it's they discovered those subatomic particles there when we go to the history if you could find this out the very first time this word came from it was John Dalton so presenting his atomic theory he introduced this word atom to the vocabulary to the word it's then after only we know that there are small particles indivisible particles that we would call atoms then presenting this idea regarding this atom that these matters are made out of atoms he further explained he explained how these atoms need to be or how these atoms are like so then his idea was an atom is quite like a golf ball atom its own is the final so atom is the last you can't divide that further you can't create or destroy that those atoms react in single kind of in uh, simple number ratios forming compounds is what he told he told it was in 1805 era then after it was in 1897 jj thompson he discovered he discovered the first subatomic particle could you remember ah those were the earlier lessons that we discussed in our earlier videos it was the discovery of electron d may jj thompson after him it was ernest rutherford in year 1970 discovered the proton and then we had proton we discovered there students it's in the history last subatomic particle that we have got in our syllabus is the neutron discovered by it was james chadwick in year 1932 we talked we talked about those informations in history historical stories we talk enough about them now it's our effort here is to find out how are they cooperating each other are they means how those subatomic particles you could find they are within the atom that's what our purpose here so it's what we are going to find here out actually it's according to our knowledge now if we have a fine order or fine way to explain how those particles you could find within the atom it's electron proton neutron including those there are some other subatomic particles as well but what we are focusing in our a level advanced level is just about electrons protons and neutrons only students it we are going to find out the structure of the atom if we have finally a fine structure but before talking about the present structure current structure we are having regarding atom it's very very important it's a valuable thing finding out what's the evolutionary story what's the evolutionary what are the milestones that you could find out regarding the structure of the atom it would be very very important to you in understanding of what is actually the atom is okay students as i have already told 
you have atom having electrons, protons, neutrons. Then it's the very first effort that put regarding uh, explaining how they exist there in the atom it was done before revealing of the other two subatomic particles. It's just after revealing of the existence of electron made by for the first time made by the scientist name who it was J.J. Thompson. Ah, it was J.J. Thompson, therefore let's call it Thompson's 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 model. So Thompson's model. It is the Thompson's model. Thompson's which model? Ah, Thompson said something like it's quite like a trampoline. You hope you have seen, hope you have experienced, hope you have uh, enjoyed trampolines. Ah, it's quite like a trampoline. Within an atom, you find electrons there as plums in a pudding. So it was his idea. Therefore, it's we call Thompson's plum pudding. Plum pudding model. Okay, that was the first idea. Okay, first model, let's say. It's just before finding out of the neutrons and protons. Then students, the second, the second effort can be seen made by his student, one of his students. It was Ernest Rutherford. So, if we identify as the Rutherfords, 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 planetary model, planetary model, ah, it's quite like planetary system that you get there, Rutherford planetary model. Okay. What next is coming? Students, the next coming one was presented by Niels Bohr. Scientist name Niels Bohr. So, it is we identify as the Niels Bohr's model. So, let us say it is uh, Niels Bohr's, Bohr's model. So, Bohr's model, Bohr's energy shell model. Uh, it is Bohr's energy shell model. So students then it's uh, modifying that Bohr's model presented. So the last model that in the in those uh, in the story it's we could uh, categorize you we could find out there are four major models presented. So the last model is we identify as we would call it the quantum model. Quantum model, or oh, for the reason that it was made on the Bohr's basis, right? So its foundation was the Bohr's theory, Bohr's model. So therefore, we could call it Bohr's summer field model as well. But let's call it quantum model. Okay, these are the four models we have got with us to discuss that in its evolutionary path we have surpassed these models in the history. So it's then we are going to find that out what the each model is having in it and what are the uh, positives and what are the negatives. What are the goods and bads they are with each model. How far each model could go means uh, up to which extent each model was qualified for. Each model would explain the events Events had erupted. Events were there erupted. Okay, that's why we are going to find it out here. Okay, students, it's, let's find it out. First, the Thompson's company model. Okay, students, the very first model presented regarding the atom was J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model. So, what he stated there was, he, he was the one who discovered electrons. 
So after discovering electrons, he told that you could find electrons within the atom, dispersing all around. So it's an atom is electrically neutral, therefore you need to have these electrons they are within the atoms with electrons are negatively charged with some positively charged positively charged species so what he told was there would be an atom as a globe so having positive charges positive charges within an atom you get positive charges then neutralizing those positive charges there you get electrons being immersed ah, electrons would be there immersing they are within the atom so it's like you find plums in a pudding it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 so you need to have 11 the number of electrons they are so it's it's what he presented. Students, it's you have an atom having electrons immersed in a positively charged globe. But you need to know this fact as well. It was just before the discovery of protons. Ah, so he did not have an idea regarding what these positively charges actually are. So then, it was the model called Thomson's plum pudding model. So it was the very first model of the center. So there were no experimental kind of uh, information. So experiment, it was not based on experimental data. Anyway, it could explain such things like uh, how would you get static electricity? When you rub a thing with another, so those are electrified, especially when those are dry matters. When you rub a glass rod with a velvet or silk clothing, then you would get the rod being electrified, as well as when you rub, a, let's say, a PVC pipe with a such a, let's say, cellophane uh, paper, then you would get that pipe being electrified. Ah, so, then, it's uh, just for the reason that removal of electrons from such uh, textures, surfaces, and going those to the other. So, those are electrified. This could explain such things like how you get this static electricity evolving but it was unable to explain how you get uh, such things as uh, the emission absorption spectra that what we are going to talk about later on so evolve uh, it could not explain the emission absorption spectra of various elements then students further when you check for those uh, ionization energies, then when you check for the pattern of successive ionization energies, if we are going to talk about them also later on. So when you check for their patterns, there are large increments, large deviations within such patterns you could find out. This could not explain such events as well. So then those are the limitations of this model. Then, if we are going to find that out the next model. So, that's why it required another model to be presented. There were limitations that only few things using this model they could explain. Okay, let's find it out the next model. Next model is the Rutherford's planetary model. Students, the second model is the Ernest Rutherford planetary model. So, it was based on the experimental data of the experiment, historical experiment done by Guy and Master. So, it's under his supervision, Ernest Rutherford's supervision, these two fellows, Guy and Master, carried out the 
gall foil experiment. If we have talked about this gall foil experiment in earlier video as well, but let's take a look at the gall foil experiment here as well. Students, it's rather than required to prove that his teacher or his uh, senior scientist J.J. Thompson was correct regarding his uh, model, his thumbprint model. So then he asked his two students, guider and master, to carry out the gold foil experiment. So he asked them to you use a very thin gold foil. It was a gold foil for the reason gold foil has a very good malleability. So then they used a gold foil. Then uh, Rutherford asked them, you use a very thin gold foil there. Then uh, if you spot a beam of alpha rays on the gold foil and you check for the alpha rays traveling direction, traveling path, then he consulted on those parents, like and master, to use a gold, gold leaf. They are. Then asked to use a radioactive source which could emit, which is, which is good at emitting alpha radiation. Then students, they he asked them to spot the alpha rays on the gold foil. Then it is a radioactive source. Then you could get, you could find radioactive sources stored within a safe. Places like it is lead, high dense metal lead is lead, lead, lead chamber. It was kept inside. So it is that you get alpha rays. Of you already know what alpha radiations are. Students, alpha radiations contains those are radiation, high energy radiations contain that each radiation particle cons consists of two protons and two neutrons. Then when you spot those alpha radiations on gold foil, what Rutherford expected saying that was if if Thomson's plum pudding model is true, then these alpha rays, almost all alpha rays need to penetrate, go through the gold foil and spot their on the screen tip, uh, he asked to use some screen screens around the gold foil. So then he expected all the alpha radiations to spot there on the rear screen tip. Then actually they carried out they carried out uh, that experiment in the in exactly the same way he told. Then they found out almost all alpha ray particles, alpha radiations spotted there at the uh, on the screen kept behind. But there was a very very trace amount. If you could count out as it is uh, one over eight thousand, one over eight thousand amount of alpha ray particles. Showed a deflection. Those were deflect and uh, deviated their paths and put it on the side screen. So students, it's very very rare number of alpha particles to be seen spotting on the front screen. So then they found those out. Those were the results of their experiment carried out. Then they reported those on Rutherford. Then Rutherford thought, ah, it's uh, something has happened there. So actually this experiment, experiment was done in year 1909. So it took two years to Rutherford to analyze this experimental results. He first got disappointed. It, it was not the same he expected. So he expected that Thomson's trampoline model would be correct. Then thinking that 
only he asked to carry out this. So seeing these experimental data observations, he finally analyzed those experimental data in a way like this. A gold foil is having few layers of gold atoms. You get few layers of, shall I call them dark. So few layers of gold atoms you get there. This is a gold atom. So, not one, but few layers you get there. Let me draw two layers at least. Ah, no. Let me, let's make it three layers. Huh? So, you get such layers of gold atoms. This is the gold, thin gold foil. Okay. Anyway, these alpha ray particles, alpha radiations, these consist of particles having two protons and two neutrons there within one alpha ray particles. Therefore, neutrons are uh, not charged, neutral. Then uh, protons are charged particles. Therefore, they carry a positive charge with them. Those alpha ray particles. If it is a loosely packed, less dense medium this atom is having, then uh, those uh, alpha ray particles could easily penetrate through the gold foil. But it's actually they, they did, most of alpha ray particles did, they could penetrate the gold foil. That's why those spot, those spot, those gold spot, they are on the real screen. But it was a very, very rare number of those alpha ray particles got deflected and further rare number of alpha ray particles got reflected. So he told that they are within each atom you get a tiny spotlight thing. It's the positively charged. Positive, positive charges are gathered and the mass also is gathered there within that narrow spotlight region. That region he identified as the nucleus ah, it was the discovery of nucleus of the atom made in 1911 so analyzing those he explained those experimental research so due to the having of nucleus it's anyway when it is going uh, past the nucleus means not even close by the nucleus it's uh, those alpha ray particles could easily penetrate so it's the reason that almost it's it's most of the most of the uh, area most of the space within the atom if you get this kind of empty space so that's why most of alpha ray particles could penetrate and spot on the real screen but there were some alpha ray particles what deflect deflect so students it was for the reason the repulsion of those alpha ray particles alpha ray particles are positively charged so it's a positively charged positively charged region uh, there that you get there in the nucleus so then that positive charge of nucleus would repel these alpha ray particles when they go close by so would be repelled and then would deflect those alpha rays, alpha ray particles. That's the reason you get some, it's 1 over 8000, some alpha rays getting deflected. Then students, it's very, very rare, the chance you have for this, it's very rare, number of alpha ray particles would come straight to the nucleus where you get or whole positive charge of the atom within the atom, they would repel this positive charge of alpha ray particles, so it would then be reflected. That's the reason. Ah, it's one over hundred thousand, one over hundred thousand number of particles, fraction of particles got reflect. So students analyzing those experimental data 
it was Tanasrathapal revealed the existence of nucleus. Then with that reveal, it was disproved the model, Kampuri model presented by J.J. Thompson. Okay, so then he had to answer others, other scientists as okay, Rutherford, if you are saying that uh, the positive charges and the mass within the atom are confined, so they are within this narrow region called the nucleus, then where those electrons truly would be there within the atom. He answered that as well. He told that you could find electrons there around the nucleus. He got the idea from Nicholas Copernicus regarding that solar system that around the sun you have planets orbiting or revolving you could call. So then using that idea he told that you have a nucleus having whole positive charge as well as the mass within the atom. Then there could be electrons orbiting around, orbiting around, revolving around this nucleus. Ah, it's like planets are around the sun, these electrons are orbiting, revolving around the nucleus. What's his idea? Therefore, we call this model the planetary model regarding the atom. Okay, then electrons are there orbiting around. Students then there was a dialogue as how they ask questions. How these electrons are not spotting on the nucleus for the reason these electrons are negatively charged as well as the nucleus is positively charged. Then negatives get attracted towards positive is the fundamental, right? The fundamental is all the times negative get attracted towards positive. Students, therefore, it's uh, very clear that their argument was there. How? How? These electrons revolving around the nucleus, Mansana, nucleus are not spotting on the nucleus, getting attracted towards the nucleus. It was fair argument. Then it was rather good, nicely explained that when you have a particle, let's say an object, moving in a circular path, then students there would be an anti centrifugal force inserted, applied on that. You imagine when it is a bicycle race. So it's uh, those competitors, they take the bend, making it inclined towards the center or curvature let's say. So that's how, how they are not rolling around. Means they survive. They do not kind of lose their balance. Ah, it's they know that that when it is a curvy path they are traveling then there would be an anti-centrifugal force inserted on that. So therefore it's you have an anti-centrifugal force when this electron is moving in a circular path orbit, then there will be an anti-centrifugal force balancing this attraction force. That's how they do not, those electrons do not spot on the nucleus. So he answered in a smart way like that. Then students further. Those fellows, scientists, they asked that, Rutherford, how is that these electrons moving with the force being applied on them? So it could be anti centrifugal or attraction force. When forces are being applied, when they move, then there would be a work done. There would be a loss of energy. Ah, these electrons moving in those orbits could lose, could lose energy as then uh, would reduce their radius finally moving in a spiral path finally they would spot on the nucleus how would not 
how it would not happen. Okay, then Rutherford could not answer. Rutherford could not answer on that argument. Students, it's fair that uh, when you have the electron is moving with an energy amount, so then uh, it's uh, have been certain forces on that. It's, it could lose energy in that aspect according to them. So it could lose energy and then finally could spot on the nucleus according to them. So, but it's not we are truly having according to our knowledge. We know that for sure electrons are not there you could find uh, in the nucleus but uh, all around the nucleus. So in the space around the nucleus. That argument made by others on Rutherford as how an electron could still survive revolving there around the nucleus not being spotting on the nucleus as a very loose energy. So when it orbits around the nucleus in certain forces and having energy, it could lose energy and spot finally they are on the nucleus. Could spot finally they are on the nucleus. How could it still survive? Then uh, it's using this uh, model, planetary model, Rutherford could not answer that. And there were some other limitations as well. So earlier we talked about something called uh, emission, emission absorption spectra of elements, especially of hydrogen. Then Rutherford's model could not be used to explain absorption emission spectra. As well as these large deviations, large increments of successive ionization energies, large gaps having there between those energy patterns could not be explained using this model. So those were the limitations were with rather words but this planetary model anyway is the very first model with the nucleus ah he was the one first presented a model regarding atom with the nucleus so first nuclear model then students it's we are going to talk about the Niels Bohr's model it's we call Niels Bohr's inertial model ah it's we are going to find details regarding Niels Bohr's energy shell model in our next video. It's the beginning, it's the introduction made on the atomic structure, atomic model. So let's find it out. For the information regarding the other few models, Bohr's model, quantum model in our next video. Okay students, it's we are going to up here. Goodbye.